Well, if you're looking to buy a car, Consumer Reports can help. They just released their annual must-see list of top new cars for 2024. So joining us this morning to talk more about that is Deputy Auto Editor John Linkove from Consumer Reports. Good morning, John. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you, John. All right, so let's talk about it. How do you guys figure out how Consumer Reports' this annual list of top cars and brands? Certainly. So what we do is we buy every vehicle we purchase just like you would. So we go to the dealer, we make the deal and bring the car in. We put on some 2,000 break-in miles. We put it through a battery of 50 subjective and objective tests. And that gives it uh, a road test score. We figure in reliability. We figure in owner satisfaction and, and safety from the government and insurance industry. And that gives it an overall score. So the vehicles that rise to the top perform well in all those categories. They tend to, to gravitate towards the, the top of our top pick list each year. And a big deal for a lot of us, the price. So did price play a role in the rankings? And how are 2024 car prices comparing to the peak prices we saw in 2022? Certainly, so price does factor in. We're not breaking it down by price, but we certainly look at vehicles that have a, a very a, you know affordable price. Six of the top 10 picks are actually available for $30,000 or less, which really will help budgets, including a number of hybrid models. Um, and overall, prices are down. The average new car price compared to previous years is down by a few thousand dollars. It's it's small comfort to people when you're looking at a forty six or forty five thousand dollar average price for a new car, but still there are many good models out there. Uh, if you do a little homework, that you can get for under thirty thousand dollars easily. John, uh, besides pricing, what were your biggest takeaways from this year's results? Well, one of the big things is that hybrid vehicles and electrification in general is really coming on strong. So sales were up in two thousand twenty three eleven percent over the previous year but uh, hybrid sales are up almost 13%. So hybrids aren't the ones like you had maybe five or even 10 years ago where they were expensive, they didn't really give you a lot of fuel economy, um, You know, they didn't make a good value. Now you can get models that they're, they're easy to drive, they make good fuel economy, 35 miles per gallon in a uh, SUV, uh, up to 40 plus in a sedan, but they also are drivable. So you don't have a, a dog slow vehicle that, you know, you're not really able to be confidently accelerating on a highway, for example, a Toyota Prius, a Toyota Camry. Uh, you know, these are vehicles that they have a lot of zip, a lot of pep. So you can get up to 70, 75, 80 miles an hour easily without feeling like you're you know, a rolling roadblock. So that's a big difference with hybrids today compared to the past. And that's a lot to remember. So do you have any resources <laughs> to help consumers weigh the pros and cons of all these options, including hybrids and EVs? Well, certainly. So if you want to, you should definitely go to consumerreports.org or cr.org if you want to abbreviate it. That will give you access to our top picks list, the top brands list, and also all of our resources for things other than cars. So no matter what you're shopping for, you could find it on consumerreports.org. John Linko from Consumer Reports. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for watching KSAT 12. If you are on YouTube, you can like and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the latest news and weather here in San Antonio.